Hi everyone. This episode is going to be a little bit different for a few reasons. The first is that most of the time as I'm working both on my research and on stuff for the channel, there's lots of little spin-offs that are cool but aren't necessarily enough for a full video. The second is that there's been a bit of weather lately that's been distracting. And finally, I've been looking at my Patreon and wanted to make some more slight changes to the rewards so that th things are of more value to all of you. So it's my pleasure to welcome you to the first grab bag video. These will be once every two months and will consist of some short projects that aren't necessarily related. For those of you currently supporting at the Kill Electron level or higher, you'll be able to suggest a topic for these videos. Either I'll answer the question, explain a concept, or do a short experiment. I'll try to fit in as many as I can per episode. If there's something in one of these episodes that you think are worth making into a whole video, let me know in the comments and I'll give it another look. First up, solar eclipses. Back in February while I was in Brazil, a partial solar eclipse took place and we managed to get some really nice images. We used two methods to view the sun, by projecting the image of the sun onto a screen and using some special solar filter film from Thousand Oaks. Where we were we could only see a 50% eclipse, but it was still a lot of fun and great solar astronomy practice. Really, the main thing seeing the eclipse did was convince me that I needed to see a proper total eclipse. And as luck would have it, the Great American Eclipse was set to happen a few months later. So after months of planning and patience, on August 21st, some friends and I drove to Columbia, South Carolina to see it. I brought along my 5-inch Newtonian telescope and a new larger piece of solar filter film. I also brought my DSLR and an adapter so I could take photos. By the time I was set up, the eclipse had already started and the edge of the moon had just barely covered the sun. I took photos every few minutes with the solar filter on until the last few moments before totality. Just before the moon eclipsed the sun, I took the filter off and started taking pictures. I'd set a timer so that I only had one minute to mess around before I forced myself to stop, look around, and enjoy the moment. It really was breathtaking seeing it in person, and these photos barely do it justice. You can see plumes of plasma, the corona, and I even got the classic diamond ring shot. This is the full progression of my images. Now that I've seen one, I want desperately to see another, though next time I'm going to try and take the measurement that originally confirmed Einstein's general relativity. In one of my earlier videos, you may have noticed these little transformers. I absolutely love these things. They're usually three to four dollars and are actually the transformer from a taser. They put out thousands of volts, but are at a really low current, which makes them ideal for many projects. Probably the easiest is to build a lifter. These simple devices consist of a strip of aluminum foil and some balsa wood or other light building material. We use some pieces of drinking straw that are an inch or two long. The foil is made into a triangle and secured to the bottom of the supports. Above this, a thin piece of wire is added, making sure it doesn't come close to or touch the aluminum. When you connect the transformer and turn it on, electrons jump from the wire to the aluminum sheet, and as they do, they drag the surrounding air with them. The corners of the lifter are anchored with some lengths of wire to prevent it from flying up and hitting you in the face with 40,000 volts. It can take some time to reduce as much weight as possible and to get everything balanced and properly spaced. If the electrodes are too close together, they'll arc, and if they're too far apart, they'll do nothing. But when everything is just right, lift off. Now, to burst your bubble in advance, lifters are incapable of actually flying if their power source is mounted on them. No lifter has ever been made that can carry its own power source. Another fun project using these transformers is a TEA laser. What I love about these lasers is that while frustrating to tune, they can be made out of very simple and readily available materials. I won't go into how to make one right now as there's lots of great videos already showing the process. When everything is carefully set up and aligned, electrical arcs fly across a gap made between two pieces of aluminum L-channel. This ionizes a large amount of air very quickly. The ionized air molecules want to get rid of the extra energy, so they release it as a flash of UV light. Because this is being done to a long line of air and not just one spot, this manifests as a laser beam out both ends. These devices are loud and dangerous, but are true lasers you can build yourself. We were even experimenting with using them as a pump to provide energy to a dye laser, but those experiments haven't worked yet. If you look around on YouTube, you'll probably find a hundred bismuth casting videos at this point. But what you probably won't find is casting bismuth in cuttlebone. Cuttlebone is the bony part of a cuttlefish that helps keep it buoyant. 
It's very foamy and made of a mixture of calcium carbonate and biopolymers. Because of this, it's incredibly heat resistant, but also easy to carve, making it an ideal material for casting metals. And the best part is that when you cast in Cuttlebone, it leaves this cool wavy pattern on your piece. Because Cuttlebone is so soft, I was able to use my wood carving tools to make some simple molds. I melted some bismuth with a blowtorch in a little crucible, and after scooping off the slag, I poured it into the Cuttlebone mold. I wanted the classic geode look, so after waiting a little while for the bismuth to partially cool, I quickly dump out the extra bismuth in hopes of leaving some nice crystals behind. I usually had to remelt and recast each piece three to four times to get a geode I was happy with. I made a few cufflinks and pendants, and then I wanted to try my hand at 3D casts. To make a crude two-part ring mold, I first flattened the face of two pieces of cuttlebone, carved out a pattern and a pore hole on both pieces, and then secured them together with some wire. Then after melting some more bismuth, I carefully poured it into the mold. The mold was a bit leaky, but in the end it made a decent piece. My ring came out as more of a donut disc, but I think the cuttlebone pattern lends itself well to this. That spark is like 10, 15,000 volts. You don't want to touch it naturally. Nice and warm. All right, power up. Okay guys, that's all I've got for the grab bag video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to leave a rating and subscribe for more videos. If you like this video, be sure to head over to my other social media pages where you can see all of these projects as they move forward long before they make it into a video. Be sure to let me know which of the projects you like the most in the comments below and if you think that any of them are worth their own video. If you'd like to have your idea or question featured in the next grab bag video or just want to support the show, head over to my Patreon and as always, your support is greatly appreciated. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.